And I, I got to tell you some, some other simple philosophies that we have. We have what I call when I, when I hire somebody or, or uh, that's going to join our firm. Um, we have um, what's called the Prime Directive, which is if any of you have ever seen Star Trek, there's a Prime Directive. And the Prime Directive in our company is no aggravation. Okay. Nobody gets to give us aggravation, whether it's customers, vendors, employees. If you aggravate, you got to go. It's that simple. Because, and it's really business, because usually it's the 1%, you know, some customer that's got 1% of your business, and he's driving you nuts, and he's taking up 80% of your head. How is that business? So aggravation is the largest cost in business. So what we do is say, okay, if you're going to cause this, one time I told Walmart, we're done, thank you, see ya. Um, fortunately, they came back and said, no, no, okay, what do you want? <laughs> so we were able to stay in. And again, but that was again based on the pro product strength. Uh, but if, if, to me, it's really simple. Uh, we live here at the work. If an employee is such that they're going to cause all kinds of havoc, they're going to aggravate, we need to go. One time, uh, one of our senior guys yelled at a receptionist. So I called him in and I said, look, you can't yell at him. You can fire him. Is that bad? They need to go. But we live here. Don't mess up this, air, this place. And we, I've found that aggravation is, if you avoid it, not only do you have fun, but it is, it's a great place to work and nobody quits. I mean, we can't get people to quit. Uh, we have basically, I mean, out of those 70 people, I think I, we lose about one a year. And, and it's to a non-job. You know, it's like, okay, they're, they don't want to work anymore. They're going to three days a week or... We have almost no turnover because there's no aggravation there. So there's huge benefits come from a simple uh, concept. Um, lots of concepts that we do are different. Somebody asked me, I think we just having an interview, uh, and somebody asked me, well, should we have risk takers? You know, entrepreneurs, risk takers. And I said, no, no, no. Entrepreneurs are not risk takers. You know, if, 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 I, if I, somebody in my company wants to take risks, I say, oh, no, no, go work somewhere else. You know, our job as entrepreneurs is to minimize risk, to manage risk, to give it to somebody else. <laughs> not take it. If you want to take risks, go to Vegas. <laughs> you know, it, it's a really simple concept. But if you tell people you should be risk takers, they go out there and just blow your money. I mean, that's, it's really dumb. Yeah. And again, like I said, you know, our other uh, principle is, please don't do dumb. Uh, it, it, we have, I mean, we have our own jargon to some extent. Like, for example, somebody comes to me in a project or a product that we're going to go sell or, or, or some, some project. I ask them, is it slam dunk? You know, and, and, no, it's really good. I said, no, no, is it slam dunk? So, but, but it really, it's a good product. And what it does is it totally clarifies their mind that, oh no, it's not slam dunk. And then I say, well, why are we going to do it? So our standards are high. We have these simple things which, which uh, clarify the mind, not totally, you know, mess up your mind. Or have so much jargon that nobody knows what you're talking about, but you got all the right words. like. Eco, ecosystem, whatever, uh, you know, everybody's got an ecosystem here, you know, or, uh, you know, value propositions. No, 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 guys, just good, sell good stuff to people who need it, you know. Uh, it, so, uh, all of that jargon, all it does is very common sense. Uh, so, the idea is you get simple. Uh, somebody asked me, you know, in the interview, I said, well, what, what does an entrepreneur really need? So, I said, they only need two things common sense and a sense of urgency. That's it. And they asked me, who, do, who should we learn this stuff for? And my answer was, from your mom. <laughs> because she's probably done more management than your MBA professor. <laughs> because she's got a budget, you got all these kids running around, hard to manage. All of this thing has to be done every day, seven days a week. Now that's work. That's hard work. That's learning on the job. 
And people say, oh, she's just a homemaker, that's, a, that's like a lowly thing. No, it's not. That's, that's great media, and people say, oh no, you know, you're, you're, you're saying, well, women should be homemakers. No, no, that's the most, that's the hardest work there is. It's the most talent you need. Us, uh, the guys go out there and work eight hours, right? Any idiot can do that. <laughs> so, it, it's, it's sort of thinking based on description, in other words, if you look at any word and you really think about it, then you understand it. Otherwise, you just use these words that everybody uses and, and they think, okay, now this guy must know something. After all, he, he, you know, he knows what the ecosystem is. So, uh, our approach to things, like I said, is, is different. You may agree with it. I'm sure I'm going to get some MBA professor to, I mean, one time at U of M, uh, University of Michigan Law School called me to speak. I said, are you guys kidding? <laughs> So I said, I, you know, I think of MBAs, I think it's totally useless. Uh, so he said, no, no, come over. So I said, fine, that's what you want. So I went over there and kind of defined it. I said, look, I mean, I'm not saying that they don't teach anything of value. I mean, I think they teach this much that is useful. Then teach this much that is useless. And then they teach this much that's harmful. Uh, so overall, you know, averages, on the useless side. Uh, because you come out of school and you actually think you know something? <laughs> really? You know, and that's dangerous because you really don't. So, uh, I never hire people out of fancy schools for that reason. My first question usually is to an MBA, how are you gonna get over it? <laughs> I'm really not alone in this. The good guys I've met, the chief executives I've met of really large companies that are, you know, that don't. Usually they get in front of the podium and it's all PC, lawyer, you know, lawyer cleared stuff, so they don't say anything. But the good guys that I've met, they're all sick of MBAs, really. Uh, they're not really enamored of this whole thing. Because, you know, look, it's a simple thing. If you're gonna learn plumbing, go learn from a plumber that's actually seen a pipe. <laughs> has fixed a leak, not just written about pipes and lectured on pipes and researched pipes. <laughs> so I, I, I'm not for theoretical plumbers. Uh, so our approach, uh, like I said, is, is, is really very straightforward. Um, let me see what else. Again. There, there are some other words, for example, that are poorly defined out there. I mean, I listen to people sometimes on TV, and it, you know, sometimes between crying and laughing, it's difficult to figure out which one to do. Uh, you know, they say all, all companies should innovate, and none of these fellows know how to, to define the word. You know, what is innovation? There are three things that I looked at. There's technology, there's invention, there's innovation. Okay. And people use those interchangeably when it's nonsense. A technology, to give you an example, is like a, a you know, and those guys who came up with lasers. That was 50 years or 60 years ago. Now, laser is a technology, it's not really an invention yet. When you use the laser in a way that's useful, that's an invention. You make a product that says, okay, this is useful to these people, that's an invention. And innovation is just simply something useful that you didn't do yesterday that you're going to do today. It could be a process, it could be a product. If you don't clarify this, this in your head, you're going to be in trouble. Because, you know, it's, it's, there are so many things that about innovation, about new products, that, or research. Take research, for example. Somehow, Wall Street fellows are so enamored of companies that spend 5% of their sales on research versus 3%. What, is this brains by the pound? <laughs> you know, it, it, it's not about the money. Good stuff doesn't come from money. And history tells us that, and we still chase it. Mobs of PhDs do not come up with great inventions. It's a couple of guys in a garage that have proven that that's not true. And it's usually a couple of people. Throughout history, it's only been a couple of people have come out with the greatest of stuff. 
And yet we insist that if we have a thousand PhDs instead of 500, we're going to do it better. It makes no sense. You know, it's like a corporation. You know, it's, uh, people in corporations are smart. However, when you put them all together, everybody knows a mob is stupid. So if you put a whole lot of smart people together, they act like a mob. They can't get it together. They're all worried about, okay, what, uh, you know, I mean, I've seen people do stuff we all have. Like, okay, my, but my carpet is smaller than the other guys. Really, that's what's going to make this company successful. Or just nominal things which, you know, posturing internally, all of that stuff happens. And it's really the management's fault, of course. You know, I would say almost everything that happens in a corporation, it's the management's fault. <laughs> it's always the management's fault. They motivate you one way. For example, you know, in the sales, sales side, you know, they say, well, we're going to give you commission. Okay. So I sell everything I can, whether the company makes money or not. Now, whose fault is that? The management. So, and then the next year I say, well, you know, you sold $100 worth, you got $10. Now, next year you sold $100 worth, I'm only giving you an eight. Now, even though he knows that the company made money on the $100. So the guy's looking at me and says, okay, so you're going to rip me off. Okay, fine. Now that the rules are clear, I'm going to game the system. So, it's really the management's fault that's, that sets it up in a way that, that's really <coughs> terrible. Uh, there's so many things that people look at that are just so messed up. Uh, for example, our hiring of sales guys. Uh, all of them are over 50. Now there's one guy 48. But all of them pretty much are over 50. Why? I don't like officers. I like sergeants. Officers write memos. Sergeants execute. If you shoot all the officers today in the army, the army will still run for a while. You shoot all the sergeants, it stops right now. So what we do is say, we get guys that are sergeants, who've been there, done that, and people say, well, you know, they don't have the energy. Maybe they don't need the energy. <laughs> they can do with their little finger what five 30-year-olds can do, take them all day. And what corporate America says is, well, no, we can just take six weeks and just teach you that. Some kid, nah, never gonna happen. I got guys, I got 18 guys that sell the whole country while our competitors have 300. Now, these guys are pros, they know what they're doing, they don't make mistakes, and they love their job. We don't even pay that much. And there's a line out the door for people wanting to come and work for us at less money. Because we give them respect, and we say, okay, you know, uh, you do it. And one time, we were putting too many, uh, I'm not sure what, 4.33, am I over time or under time? I'm over. Okay. We want to listen to you. Okay, I better end this. Um, <laughs> you know, I can't read, so. <laughs> so anyway, that's... I think there was going to be some question and answer that you may want or not, which uh, uh, I'm not sure, that, again, this was useful, but uh, from all your laughing, I assume it was entertaining. <laughs>